Okay, we're going to look at um, Walker 1.2, Physics and Society. Um, first off, modern society runs on developments in science and technology, and more breakthroughs are coming all the time. The scientific discovery gives added insight into nature, but knowing how something works isn't the same as knowing how best to use that knowledge. That is something scientists, politicians, and an informed public must decide together. In making decisions that affect society, people need to avoid bias. Now, what is bias? Bias is a preference for a point of view, for personal rather than logical or scientific reasons. So to avoid bias, you have to make sure that you don't um, let your personal views come into, come into play rather than looking at the data. Because scientists are human, they can be affected by bias as much as politicians, business leaders, and others. That's why it's important that the general public be educated about the various aspects of modern science so that they can see through biases and make informed decisions. A scientific research project can last months or even years. Once it is complete, the next step is to publish the results to make them known to the scientific community. Respected scientific journals don't publish every report or paper that is submitted to them. Before they, report, before they publish a report, they must do what is called a peer review. So what a peer review is, is that the report is sent to several experts in the field and they look for errors, biases, and oversights. Only after being recommended for publication by these experts can the report be published. So when you read one of these reports in a scientific journal, it means not only was the research done in a, in a, over a long period of time with tons of, with tons of data, but also that peers People in the scientific community have looked over the data and to make sure that what they see, what you read is what they see also in the data. Science and technology are an important part of our modern society. New technologies depend on scientific advances, some of which occur years or even decades before their practical applications. For example, Einstein's theory of relativity predicts that moving clocks run slower than clocks at rest. And though this at the time was hard to prove when uh, we came up with gps global positioning systems right to make gps work they have to account for the slowing down of moving clocks and gps now works better because of what einstein talked about relativity years ago an important part of science is the ability of scientists in different locations to reproduce an experiment and verify that the reported results are consistent to aid in collaboration and verification, scientists have developed a system of measurement referred to as the metric system. Scientists throughout the world use this system when collecting data and performing experiments. So when a scientist does an experiment, that has to be something that somebody else can also do to see if they get the same results. And normally um, when that's done, then you can see the papers being written and you can see that the peers really respect that person. Now, um, collaboration and verification, the metric system just gives everybody a, a common way to measure things. I know in the United States, we are not metric based and you will find science talking with one language of measurement and everybody else talking with another. Um, but scientists have decided the metric system is the way to go and that's how they do things scientifically. So that's why we learn it. Um, the number one priority in any physics experiment, of course, is safety. So before you start a laboratory exercise, be sure to read all the steps and make sure that you understand the entire procedure. And of course, following my instructions and the directions in the textbook is probably the most important safety rule of all. And as we do things um, in labs and, uh, and the like, we will find that safety is for sure the number one priority.